Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Hope that you've been enjoying this hot, sultry weekend. Uh, it's nice to be in the, in the air conditioning. Uh, although this morning it was pretty nice. Uh, walking the dog in the neighborhood, it was a pretty nice morning. So um, before we begin, a couple of announcements. You can see that we have a whole amazing load of uh, school supplies, backpacks, all of the stuff that goes inside the backpacks. We're going to be blessing all of that um, this morning during the service. And then after church, uh, you are invited to help us pack it up into um, a couple of cars, Katie and Cassie's cars, and they'll be taking it down to um, the Darby Borough tomorrow for distribution and uh, getting ready for school um, right after Labor Day. So uh, thank you for your incredible generosity. It's really impressive to see it all lined up on the pew, and uh, we're very excited to share with our friends. Um, talking about sharing, the Darby Mission Food Giveaway for um, this month, we've been asked to repeat breakfast items collections for September. So we're collecting cereal, Pop-Tarts, granola bars, shelf stable milk, you all know the, the drill by now, and the deadline there is um, September the 19th, so we have a few weeks for that. Um, Katie wants me to tell you that we are still accepting submissions for the September newsletter until 6 p.m. tomorrow. So if you have something you want to, you know, a, a restaurant review, something going on with uh, ministry that you're involved in church or outside of church, something that you're excited about, it doesn't have to be long, and um, Katie is a merciless editor, so you know, uh, spelling mistakes. Your, you know, she, I, I'm personal experience here. Uh, so anyway, no, she's she's very kind. Um, so 6 p.m. tomorrow is the deadline. I hope that you will contribute. It's uh, the newsletter is becoming such a really interesting, diverse, and collaborative effort of the parish, and that's really fun and exciting. Um, we will be. Um, if you'd like to come, and another opportunity for collaboration is folding it and mailing it or putting it in envelopes and stamping and all of that. Um, that'll be this Wednesday at the Memorial Room, uh, in the Memorial Room at 12.30. So if you'd like to come and help with that, that's always fun. Um, the daycare has to ask the people in there to keep quiet because the kids are trying to take a nap and everybody's giggling and having a good time. So uh, that's a good time. And then finally, we are excited this week on Tuesday that our new Carillon Bell system will be installed. The speakers will be installed um, right up there, right on the tower. Some of you might be able to see through the window. That'll be this Tuesday. We already have the electronic system installed in the um, sound booth in the church. And so we're really excited to start having um, music again from in, in the form of bells and, and uh, hymns that are played on the bells. They're not real bells, but they're um, really, really, it's a really cool system. So we're really excited to have it. We are going to invite the neighborhood, all the people who hear the bells. Yes? I just want to point out that this is the third attack. <laughs> third time is the charm. That's, that's right. It was supposed to have been done in June and then in July and now we're in August. So, uh, we'll see. I feel, I feel good about this. Um, yeah, they would keep continuing having the wrong equipment to, to install because you have to have a lift to go up there. Um, but we are going to be inviting the, the whole neighborhood to um, submit some of their favorite hymns or tunes that they would like the bells to play. Um, because it really is a, a neighborhood thing. I have people stop and ask, stop me and ask why the bells haven't been playing. Um, you know, parents tell their kids when the six o'clock bell rings, you need to come home from the park. So it's one of those assets to the neighborhood, and we want to include the whole neighborhood. And it's going to be really exciting and fun. And, and thank you, Dan, for continued efforts on trying to get that done. Um, so this is going to well, happen. Fingers crossed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, our our organist and um, music minister is on vacation this week, so thank you to Jean, who will be um, playing. And uh, after, <laughs> after, uh, after that prelude of chopsticks, um, <laughs> our, our service will begin.
be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be thy dream, now and forever. Amen. Earth beneath, 
for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. So God. The response today is Psalm 138. I'll read the first verse, you read the next, and then we'll alternate. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down to the temple, and praise the name, because your God gave us. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's interesting that this little vignette, this story, happens in the region around Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was a really important Roman city. Um, at various times, the, the Roman governor would, would be there of the region. Um, it was far more important than any city in um, Israel or Palestine. And Jesus is up there. If you remember last week, he's, he's up in this region that is not, um, not his home region, right? This is not Galilee anymore. This isn't Jesus' hometown these are not fellow Jewish people that he's interacting with up there. This is a strongly Gentile area. And um, what's really cool is I've been there. <laughs> have, have you? Have, so so I, there are five, five people in this room who have been to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and especially to a place near the, the Roman city um, called Banyas, where there is a, a spring that is the source of the Jordan River. So you can imagine up north, almost to the, Syri the modern day Syrian border in the Golan Heights, or well, depending on how you, Never mind. we're not gonna get a geo <laughs> but, but up there, right? Um, and it, it goes all the way down um, to um, where, where Jesus was baptized in um, the Judean desert. And so this area, though, this strongly Gentile area, this spring was, the, was a holy site for, um, for ancient Canaanite deities long before the Romans showed up, but also for the Roman and the, or the Greco-Roman god Pan. And so I've stood in the, the ruins, um, the ruins, right? It's ruin, the temple of the god Pan. And there is this cave next to it call the cave of Pan, or colloquially, the gates of Hades. And even before the Romans showed up, uh, it was a site of human sacrifice. There are these cliffs, and uh, you wouldn't know it now because it's a, it's a national park uh, of Israel, and it's this beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and we ate ice cream there. I mean, it's <laughs> kind of weird. But, but you know, 3,000 years ago, they were throwing people off the cliff into this cave. This site of human sacrifice, they were worshiping their gods there. And so that is, is, puts this really interesting context to the conversation that Jesus has with his disciples when he asks them, who do people say that I am? And they reply, well, you know, some people think that you're John the Baptist reincarnated. Right? You remember the story of Herod cutting John the Baptist's head off? His worst nightmare, I mean, he had a guilty conscience. His worst nightmare was that John the Baptist had come back to haunt him. And he thought that Jesus might be this sort of reincarnation 
of John the Baptist. Other people thought he might be the reincarnation of Elijah. Other people think that he's a great prophet. I mean, you hear the same thing for people today. Well, Jesus was this wonderful example, this wonderful prophet, right? And so the disciples sort of list all of these, these things that people are saying about Jesus, people are talking about Jesus. But then Jesus, and you can imagine in the context of the cave of Pan, this place of human sacrifice, you can imagine Jesus looking into the eyes of his disciples and saying, but who do you say that I am? And immediately Peter says, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. What an extraordinary confession of faith by Peter. And so Jesus says, blessed are you, Peter, upon this rock, right? Peter comes from the word um, Petras, so like rock. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades, will not prevail against it. Now, fast forward 2,000 years, and this church that Jesus talks about has grown and expanded throughout the world, and we've built buildings in, in almost every city, in every, almost every village. There are, there are very few places in the world where Christianity is not at least um, heard of, right? And at the same time, we've, we've made institutions, we've founded endowments, we've built very good buildings, and, and, and trust me, I'm very thankful for our beautiful building, very grateful for our endowment. I'm looking at you, Matt. You've done a great job. And I'm grateful for a paycheck, right? But, but, but humans and in our society, we are at a, at a time when we are very suspicious of institutions. And so people can look at, at the institutional nature of the church. People can look at the great harm that, that, that people have done and that institutions have done in the name of Jesus. And it's easy to just write that off. It's easy, to, um, even me, to be suspicious of this institution and of, of the great harm that broken people do. Right? Broken people hurt other people. Hurt people hurt other people. And so it's easy to write this off, this statement, this grandiose statement that Jesus is making about the church, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It kind of seems like the gates of hell have in some, some days, right? And it's easy to write off this sort of grandiose power that Jesus seems to give to his disciples. But we need to remember that the church is not a human institution. And the human institutions that have been built around the church, they can be good, they can, be, they can do a lot of harm, they can be sort of neutral, but they aren't the same thing as the church. The church is a gathering of people who have become a community because they recognize that Jesus is the chosen one of God, that Jesus has come to the world to heal everything that needs healing, to bind up the brokenhearted, that Jesus is the one that is renewing all of creation. And that community, a community that's not founded on how good we are, it's not founded on how the good things we can do or the beautiful buildings that we can make, but a community that is founded on faith in Jesus, that is the church. And nothing, nothing can stand against the power of people who trust in Jesus. So I've been to Caesarea Philippi. This past week, I was in a, a place much closer to home. I, was, I had the opportunity to go down to the neighborhood of Kensington and spend some time walking around. And, of course, you know Kensington, the epicenter of um, the opioid crisis in this country, the capital city of, of drugs in our country. And, you know, it's in, this city, in the city of Philadelphia, in this region, it is the epicenter of gun violence in our area. 
And so I was walking around, there, there's a, a group of people, a group of Christians, you might call them a church, who 25 years ago decided to move into Kensington and they reclaimed a bunch of abandoned, condemned houses and have, have spent the last 25 years rebuilding them and planting gardens. And, and so you're walking down Kensington Avenue and you take a right and you go down the block and all of a sudden you're in this most beautiful, peaceful, wonderful place that these, that these people have, have been working on for 25 years. And we're getting this tour, and right there on Kensington Avenue, there, uh, Kensington Avenue and 8th Street, there's this big, imposing, like early ninth or late 19th century bank building. You know, the, you can imagine the marble columns and this huge building, and it's right there, kind of as a testament to more prosperous times in Kensington. And um, it's now what's called the Esperanza Health Center. It's, it's a Christian organization that's, that provides free health care to people. And the guy who was with us, the guy who has spent the last 25 years living in the neighborhood, he was talking about how in the early days they would bring food down and they would be feeding people in front of this bank when, when it was a bank, right? 25 years ago, it was a big bank. And they'd be feeding people on the sidewalk, people who have drug addictions, people who are homeless, and the bank was constantly calling the police on them. The bank was constantly harassing them. Security guards were out there telling them they had to leave and, and you know, getting people out from in front of their building. And the, the man, his name is Shane, who was telling the story, he said, you know, the bank folded a few years ago, but we're still here. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And the thing is, it's not about what those people did. It's not about how great they are, how courageous they are, how you know, they spend all their time there. It is about what drives them to do that. The confession that Jesus is the chosen one of God. The confession that Jesus is the one who, when we trust in him, when we give him whatever we have, our, our lives as a living sacrifice, as Paul says, when we give what we have to Jesus, Jesus transforms us. Jesus transforms our gifts, and nothing, absolutely nothing, can stand against the power of that transformation. It's like the Eucharist, when we offer that bread, and we break that bread, and then we share it with each other. It's that brokenness that God can use to make something whole. And so when we offer our lives, even as broken as we are to God, be assured, believe, trust that God is able to transform that just as God is transforming every inch of this world. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Amen. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity of God.
This time we are going to bless the backpacks and the school supplies that we have collected for um, the students of Linwood Elementary School. And so you can find your you can find the blessing in your service loop. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The, the, maker maker of heaven and earth. the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have brought us to this new school year. We thank you for this season. We thank you for schools to attend or challenges to awake our minds. We thank you for principals, for school staff members, for teachers, coaches, and friends. We pray for strength to persevere and wisdom to learn. When we are stressed and overwhelmed, remind us that we can come to you with our burdens and find rest. We pray that you help us to honor you in all situations that we will encounter this school year and help us to love others as ourselves. Help us especially to look out and care for those who are vulnerable, mistreated, and afraid. We pray for protection upon all students, teachers, and staff. We pray especially for the students, faculty, and staff of the schools that those who are gathered here are associated with. Feel free to name them. Black Rock Elementary in Linwood. And now, Almighty God, we pray you to bless these backpacks. May they do their job well, and may they be a constant reminder to everyone who wears them of your presence, of your mercy, of your never-ending love. Bless all those who learn, all those who teach, and all those who facilitate learning. May your Holy Spirit guide, may your, may your faithful might protect, and may your peace, which passes all understanding, guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive, Christ is risen, Christ is alive again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
by Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom. us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the
God is love. Jesus teaches us to love. Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us go forth, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. Thanks be to God.